the secret to winning a presidential debate and also winning over voters, more importantly? That is obviously something that is all on top of mind for President Biden and former President Trump tonight. Is it a vibe? Is it a zinger? Maybe it's a moment like this one. I think when you make that decision, it might be well if you would ask yourself, are you better off than you were four years ago? Uh, we need fundamental change in this country, and that's what I'd like to bring. If I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Those three moments and many more are the kinds that my next guest has studied and the voters' reactions to them for more than three decades. Longtime pollster and communications strategist Frank Luntz joins me now. And Frank, I mean, you have written this really interesting article today about what actually wins voters over when it's in debates. And shockingly, to those of us on cable news, it's not always what, what the pundits think is the biggest takeaway. No, it's very frustrating. In my walk here, I was saying to some of your staff, be very careful who you predict is the winner, because voters see it very differently. They're not trying to score points. They don't care if you trip up on something. And they're actually not focused precisely on every detail. They're looking at the personality. They're looking at the presentation. Do I trust them? Do I like them? Can I see them as president? Is this someone I want to have in my living room every night for the next four years? And in the end, it's the reason why Donald Trump lost that debate with Joe Biden four years ago and why he beat Hillary Clinton. And that line there, all the pundits said, oh, my God, we're going to be a banana republic. He says he'd throw her in jail. And every network went nuts on him. Our focus group said, oh, my God, he's actually going to hold her accountable. This is exactly what we're looking for in politics. So he was a disaster in 2020, and he was really good in 2016. Well, when you look at those two moments, I'm, I'm sure there were some voters who did not like that moment. This, sure. this uh, political opponent clearly saying he'd put his other, uh, his opponent in jail uh, because he doesn't like her. Uh, but when you actually look at this, you know, you write in this and say that the key moments that will have the greatest impact on the remaining undecided voters, which is obviously what we're all paying attention to here, are those in which the candidates attack each other in defining ways or undermine the political case that each wants to present to Americans. Viewers will quickly decide whether the accusations are fair and the response is effective. I mean, if you are trying to appeal to these independent, undecided voters Thursday night, what does that look like? By the way, it's only 4%. It's only in three states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And I'd be asking a rhetorical question, just like Reagan did. Is inflation higher or lower today than it was four years ago? Is the border safer or safe? Do you feel more or less secure if I'm Donald Trump? And if I'm Joe Biden, do you really want to go back to that chaos? Do you really want to go back to, and I'm going to do that for three or four times, either ask a question or make a statement where you know the public at home is nodding their heads. The problem is Trump wants to own Joe Biden, and he's got no self-control whatsoever. And in Joe Biden's case, he really hasn't figured out how to handle the ex-president and he's not made the case for his own re-election as well as he could have. The economy is better than people realize. The situation, the, the, the legislation that he's passed, they don't know this. And you know what? It's not your fault. It's the president's fault. You know, when you're watching uh, a football game and you're there and you can hear the audience or you're watching it on TV or you can see the refs and their calls, when you look at this and there's no audience, for, for a moment like that, what Trump said about Hillary Clinton, there would have been no reaction to that inside that room if there had been no audience. If there's that, if the mics are being cut off and maybe we'll still see them talking in the two shots but not actually hear them, how much of a deal make? It's huge. It's a big deal. These rules do not help Donald Trump. He was so eager to get Joe Biden into a debate that he said yes to anything. If I'd been advising him, I would have said, don't, not this one. Yes, you want to debate him, but not through these rules. You need an audience. And second, he's so, he has no faith in Biden even being able to complete a sentence. So week after week, he made fun of him. And now he's trying to reverse that. Now he's trying to raise their expectations. It doesn't work. If you tell people for months, this guy can't complete a sentence. Yeah, with a week to go, and you're saying, exactly. oh, he's going to be formidable. Or, or 
this year's, you know, he's going to be jacked up on drugs was was 2020s. Oh, he's going to have an earpiece. Both look ridiculous. Uh, the other thing, though, is these two men are probably the best known politicians in U.S. history to see them go up to on the stage. Everyone knows everything about them. Is there anything really left to to say to change voters minds? Do you not, think not much? 70 percent of Americans do not want these two people. They're upset that is Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. In the end, I believe we're going to be voting those final undecided voters, not on the candidate they like, but the, on the candidate they dislike the least. And that's why our democracy is so challenged right now. We're not happy with our choices, so we're trying to vote for the least worst evil. Well, when you put it that way, Frank, just sounds great. I Frank know. And, and the most depressing <laughs> guest you could ever have. Eventually, you're going to stop allowing me to do this. But here's the problem. I listen to the American people, and this is what they're telling me. Great to have you, Frank. Thank you for that. We'll see what the American people think of Thursday night. Up next, we have House Speaker Mike Johnson joining us live.